JPEG Mafia is one of the most innovative and digital creators to come out of hip-hop in a long time, gaining widespread popularity and notoriety following the release of his 2018 album, Veteran. But being 28 years old at the time of the album's release, and already having a deep history with making music, which started with him producing at the age of 15, it's no surprise to anyone that he has a healthy discography of mixtapes that already existed long before this album. If you're looking at Spotify, you'll see the first album on there is Black Ben Carson, his first studio album released in 2016, alongside a few singles that predate the veteran album also, but this is very much the surface of the j -Babe Mafia rabbit hole. Dating back even more, you don't need to look much further than his Bandcamp page, where you'll find a couple more tapes like The Second Amendment, his collaboration album with his good friend and frequent collaborator Freaky, and his first ever release as j -Babe Mafia, Communist Slow Jams. Communist Slow Jams was the first tape released under the JPEG Mafia name and absolutely cements the same themes and styles seen in his current music. But before the name came, JPEG Mafia was making music under a slight different spelling of his birth name, Barrington Devon Hendrix, releasing music under the moniker Devon Hendrix. On the Devin Hendrix Bandcamp page, there are four releases, being Dreamcast Summer Songs released in 2009, Joe Chill World released in 2010 with a very era-appropriate snapback on the album cover, The Rockwood Escape Plan released in 2012, and finally, The Ghost Pop Tape released in 2013. This might not seem like much in the wake of his more recent releases, but all of these albums carry a very different, but very distinctively JPEG Mafia sound, much like his recent releases, but without the notoriety or critical acclaim he's currently afforded. Peggy himself has also stated that the Ghost Pop tape was made at the worst point of his life. He said this in a 2020 Twitter thread. My Call Me Maybe cover is from 2013, not last year. Since you journalists insist on being bad at your job, let Peggy help you. Would you ever release your old work on major platforms or eventually remix them? I won't lie, some of my old sh** is harder to hear now, especially the ghost pop tape. I was very close to death when I made this, but for y'all, I will. No dates right now, but when I have time and desire, I'll do it. The ghost pop tape was made while he was stationed in Japan with the military, and we even hear his disdain for his time there in the communist slow jams track titled Japan through lines like, I'm going back to Osaka with no father, I'm a bastard without a battery up in my Acura. Branded as a, in my doom to the tomb, I had two strikes up out the womb. Through all my travels, I've been with nerds, been with killers, and the only one constant is nobody likes highlighting the extreme racism he faced during his stationing there. Even with all this torment, however, Peggy has stated that he is working on the remaster and will be remastering this album. Okay, so just before the show, I was seeing a lot of your diehard fans queuing up, so I was going through and asking them what they'd want to ask you. And something that kept on popping up is when are these remastered tapes coming out, specifically the Ghost Pop tapes oh, yeah, and yeah. also the uh, Dark Skin Manson. Everyone was asking about them. Um, I don't know, but I, I don't think I'm ever going to re-release Dark Skin Manson because it sucks. <laughs> but um, I like Ghost Pop Tape first. Yeah, and, but the Ghost Pop Tape, yeah, I am remas remastering that. I'm, I'd be real surprised if someone wanted a remaster of Dark Skin Manson. The other album he mentions in this clip is nowhere to be seen on these pages, however, as Dark Skin Manson isn't on JPEG Mafia or Devin Hendrix. This album, as all things on the internet become, is re-uploaded and easily accessible now just by searching for it. But if you listen to it, it's an incredibly abrasive and aggressive album, even more so than Peggy's usual releases. This is because it was fully made and released in under a month, as Peggy had moved to Baltimore during the Freddie Gray protests. These protests erupted after Freddie Gray was arrested and died in police custody. Freddie Gray was arrested for possession of a switchblade, however just two weeks after it was confirmed that he was carrying a legal pocket knife. Gray was transported in a police van during this arrest where he sustained injuries to his neck, vocal box and spinal cord. He fell into a coma and sadly died six days after this arrest. The medical examiner of this case ruled it to be a homicide by the police. The anger felt by the public translated into these protests that Peggy Ball witnessed to as another black man was senselessly killed by the police and that anger became Dark Skin Manson. Peggy even elaborated on this saying that it confirmed his affiliation with Baltimore as he hadn't seen this happen in most other places. Dark Skin Manson, Black Ben Carson, they were a direct response to the Freddie Gray incident. Like the entire idea of that.
I just never seen anything like that, like on American soil in person. So I went home and just kind of chronicled it. That's when I knew Baltimore was home to me. Cause I seen that same kind of shit happen in multiple cities, but Baltimore was like, nah, <laughs> it's just like not at all. Like this is not right. And you know, I just respected them for that. But that wasn't the only album from Peggy that isn't available on either Bandcamp page. In fact, Joe Chilworld isn't even just the name of this Devin Hendrix album, but it's also the name of an inactive YouTube channel that last posted around nine years ago with a classic 2012 YouTube intro for Devin Hendrix promoting his Instagram at the time at the start of one of his videos. This YouTube channel also has the Dreamcast Summer Songs cover as its profile picture with the full album seeing one of its releases here. What's more interesting is if we go by the oldest upload, it seems to be a re-upload of a song made in 2009, as the title suggests, released in 2012, being a sort of conflicted love song about Devon's music girl, who he canonically shoots dead in the end of a song, a theme shared in the description that reads, produced by Devon Hendrix, recorded in 2009. Sometimes it's hard to keep slaving over this music knowing nobody is watching, but I have a feeling it will pay off in the end, and even if it doesn't, I'll die trying. This song is more important than you might think, however, as, alongside a slowed version of another track featured on this channel, this song is the last track to feature on the first ever released Devon Hendrix tape. While there isn't much information about the album's creation, nor the reason it's been removed from Bandcamp, one Redditor around four years ago posted this in the r slash JPEG Mafia subreddit. I found Peggy's first album, Devon Hendrix Generation Y on the Wayback Machine. Following the link, it's dead, but thankfully one commenter did link another Wayback Machine link to the Bandcamp page that still works, at least visually. From here, we can see the last track is Ends to the Means yet again, alongside the link to the Joe Chilworld YouTube channel, next to the description which reads, All tracks produced by Devon Hendrix, The Rockwood Escape Plan, recorded in an abandoned Adventist church over the course of seven days, beginning on Sunday, December 19th, and ending on Christmas Day 2010. The end result of a severe lack of funds and overabundance of creativity, Generation Y, 1989, rap is for pussies. Devon Hendrix is an absolute character, whether you like him or not, you can't deny his charisma and Generation Y deserves some real exposure in the hip-hop community. It's a brilliant album which has been completely overlooked. A quote from Broke Sound WordPress. The OP does pull through in another comment he posted, however, with a link to the internet archive where the full album is available for download, remaining listenable and available online for all retrospective fans. Now, JPEG Mafia has been making music for himself truly from the beginning, being his own harshest critic, removing the music he no longer believes in and revisiting some of the darkest times of his life. I'm sure it goes without saying too that the likelihood is there will be much more music from Peggy archived throughout his travels around the world that we will never hear. He has been a musician, a rapper, a producer for as long as he has been able to, and that motivation he showed in the description of Ends to the Means is still very much alive today.